All right, today we are going to start a landscape, a winter landscape inspired by the artwork of Jen Aranyi. She has become really famous. Um, she has a lot of social media. Um, she is a designer and works for a company, but then also does her own artwork that she sells. Um, I have seen her work on Instagram and Etsy, and she does a lot of these kind of night sky inspired paintings with the mountains and the trees. Um, and the only thing that's colored is actually the sky itself. She leaves a lot of her artwork black and white and does what we call pen and ink technique. Um, so all the trees are created with you know, something similar to a Sharpie. Um, same thing with all the, the texture and the shadows on the mountains. That's all done with a Sharpie. Um, today, we are going to start this. We're not gonna get a lot done, but we are gonna be creating some mountains. So when we create the mountains, there's a couple of steps we wanna follow. Um, the first thing we wanna do is actually get that mountain line, and you'll notice it's very zigzaggy. Um, it's not a smooth line up and down the mountain. There's a lot of smaller mountain peaks before you get to the top. Sometimes she does just kind of one larger mountain. Um, other times we see kind of several mountains next to each other. Um, so your first job for your artwork today is to create that mountain line. And you need to be very zigzaggy about it. So um, somewhere closer to the top of your paper, because we are going to put some stuff down below. You want to maybe come down and then go up a, and then down a little. And then maybe up and down. And just going up and down, not always going straight across, but maybe some shorter lines, some longer, shorter, shorter, longer. So mix it up. Don't make it look all the same. All right, so once you have that, and honestly, mine might be a little bit high up. You might want a little more sky space there. Um, after you've done that, you are going to Sharpie that line with the... Um, fine point Sharpie, the regular tip, not the Sharpie pen. Just try your best to stay on top of your pencil line. We're not making new lines with the Sharpie. We're just tracing the ones that we have to make them permanent because we will eventually paint the sky. Now, after that line is done, you won't need the fine point Sharpie much longer. We have to create shadows with it, just the edges of them. And then we're going to fill the shadows in with the Sharpie pen. All right, so there's the edge of my mountains. Everything up here is going to be sky. Um, and like I said, I'd pro I maybe should have left a little more sky. Um, but this will work just fine for what I'm showing you. So in the second step here, <clears throat> you have to go from the middle of the peak, which is the tippy top, and then you go down to a point, and then back up to the dip. So it's always peak, we start at the middle of the peak, and we go down, and then we go to the dip. And it always has to be on the same side, because if the light is shining this way, then the shadows are all gonna be on this side. So start in the middle of the peak, go down, come up to the middle of the dip. Um, right here, peak, I wouldn't start there, because that's a dip. I'm gonna start at the peak, I'm gonna go down really far on this one and go up to the dip. So peak, down, up to the dip. Peak, that's a little one, down, up to the dip. I usually, if it's a longer line here, I usually make the, the dip down a little bit longer. Um, if it's not as long like right here, that's a real short space, then it's shorter. So middle of the peak, down, up to the middle of the dip. Um, this one over here is tricky because I don't really know where the peak is. But I can tell you this is the middle of the dip, so I can just kind of take that one off the edge of the paper there, and that will all be shadow. So now that I have those lines done for number two, now I'm going to use the regular Sharpie again, not the Sharpie pen, and I am going to Sharpie those lines as well. And if you're not sure if you did these right, I would have somebody take a look before you make them permanent with Sharpie. Now, after these are sharpied, you do not need the fine point sharpie anymore because you're going to be filling the shadows in with the sharpie pen. So, um, the oh, you know what? I missed a step. 
There's actually a couple more things we can do. These are like little valleys or little like shadow areas in the, the snow on the sides of the mountain. And you could use the fine point Sharpie to add some of those in as well. That's number three here on the directions. Um, you want to kind of start and kind of curve down and then kind of curve up. You can do a couple of those. They don't need to be um, all the same. Obviously you can see on this, they're all a little bit different. If you add a couple of those in, they'll be like little pockets of shadows. All right, so now I'm done with the fine point Sharpie. So I'm on number four. Every shadow space gets filled in with um, parallel lines, pretty close together. So you're gonna wanna be very slow about this because they need to begin and end in the shadow. You wanna keep them really close together and they're kind of angled, they're diagonal lines and they're all gonna go the same way in every shadow side. So this should look exactly the same in each of these spaces. The lines should be going the same direction and they should be pretty close together. I would say maybe um, like a fingernail apart. They're pretty, they're pretty close. You can also do that same effect right in here in these little shadow pockets that you made. And these are gonna help make the mountains look 3D, which is something we've been practicing. We did that in our optical illusion weavings. So we made the illusion of something that looked 3D that wasn't really there. This pen and ink technique actually kind of does the same things to these mountains. They look much more three-dimensional once we add in these shadow pockets because now we're starting to see you know, light and shadow rather than just the, the flat line of the edge of the mountain. We're creating those details. So um, you would go ahead and finish all the shadow pockets with that exact same type of line, that diagonal line. And then um, she does add a little bit of extra texture just to kind of show like a little bit of snow direction on the mountains and some of it's little dots and some of it's just like little dash lines. I wouldn't go too crazy with that. And you only need to do it up in the mountain space because we're gonna be using this space down here for the other area of our landscape, the foreground. The mountains are the background and then we're gonna be doing more with the foreground later on.